In this particular council, I've had a number of problems. The council was racked with personality and political division. That political division was fostered uh, during the time of a particular general manager who lobbied councillors and caused her staff to lobby councillors, and that is just contrary to how everything should operate. There was manipulation went on between the two bodies, uh, between certain officers and certain councillors. Now that always meant that you weren't going to get a debate and a result that represented the community in a true and fair way. But we've had this blurred line which has really, uh, really adulterated the normal processes of local government. One of the fundamental things that the elected arm needs to do is genuinely communicate and listen to its community. Now you don't do everything that the community wants all the time because there's a whole range of considerations. But fundamentally, if you look at the charter, you're there to serve the community and make responsible decisions on their behalf. Now that doesn't mean you can't be businesslike, it doesn't mean you can't make decisions or that you delay decisions, it doesn't mean any of that. I've described it as council not being connected with its community and I truly believe that that's the fundamental thing that should happen um, and, and if council can really connect and listen to its community, the next council will function much better. I spent a lot of my Tuesday nights last year sitting in on council meetings and what struck a lot of us was that although there's some very good people on council, they're in a minority. What we have at the moment in council is a very unfortunate majority who treat the community with an incredible amount of contempt and disdain. When we first sat round the table together and started working together, what was so exciting was that this was a group of people who were prepared to sit down and listen to each other and really nut out some of the problems that local council has to deal with and, and really work with each other to find solutions. People in council present the Newcastle community as being divided, but I don't believe the Newcastle community is divided. I think the problem we have is that there are some councillors on council who support the community and some who don't. I'm very excited about the Community One ticket. The council needs good people around the table and Brian Havenhan is one of those people who has the temperament to be Lord Mayor and to be a councillor. Brian's had good experience in small business, he understands the publishing industry, he spent time at being a lecturer at university, but he's a people person and I know that he has the wherewithal and the wit to make a great councillor. He, he, he understands people and uh, he'd make a good Lord Mayor, I'm sure. It's time to elect councillors who are prepared to stand up for the community and start to build relationships with the community again. Well, I think we have a council management who believe that time spent talking to the people of Newcastle is a waste of time. We need to turn that around and I think the loss of the community forums is an example of that sort of attitude. Engagement builds proper relationships and good relationships and good relationships build healthy communities. The exciting thing about this group of candidates is that they are independent so they can represent their communities without having to bow down to party politics and that's really important at local level. Patricia Gillard, her great quality is her people skills, her ability to converse with people. She's got qualifications in community research, in, in conducting surveys and that sort of attribute would be tremendous help to an elected body such as Newcastle Council. Patricia would make a great councillor. The communities that I've belonged to in Newcastle since I came in 2003 have mainly been at the university until a couple of years ago when I set up my own business here. So I have done communication, also e-business, and I know that uh, in good councils they, they constantly are in their communities recording what people want and need and then when they speak to the communities it's all about those those people images of people statements of people we don't hear that from this council and that shows that this council has lost its 
regular connection with working from the needs and the activities and the wisdom actually of the communities and building that into its future planning and its work. We have to be uh, doing research. I'm a researcher, that's what I've done all my life. We have to do research to find out what's invisible at the moment but that we need to know about people in order to build the future work. And you can do that through community engagement and through the ways that you talk to people and particularly the ways you listen to people. Andre Rufo has done a lot of work in the ethnic community. He's the president and chair of the Ethnic Communities Council. They've recently reconstructed a new a, a, a building in Waratah. A lot of volunteer work has gone on to get that building underway and it's a resource for the ethnic communities of Newcastle. Andre is a person who works well with people and he understands people's problems. The Pink Friends of Pennyball uh, I founded approximately nine years ago. Um, we've held four to date and they're in memory of my, uh, my late wife Sandra who lost uh, her battle against breast cancer. Um, Sandra was 39 at the time that she passed away and her aim was to live to 40 and have a huge 40th birthday and have a masquerade party. So a year after her passing, I uh, approached some of our very close friends and said, how would you like to help me uh, run a ball in Sandra's memory? So we went ahead and we organised that. Uh, we named it the Pink Frangipani Ball because the Pink Frangipani was Sandra's favourite flower. Um, the first ball was a phenomenal success. We had uh, 450 people, I think it was, at West's in the Starlight Room. So far we've raised almost $300,000 which has gone directly to breast cancer research. Um, the nights are fantastic. The people come dressed uh, like a million dollars. The ladies, the ladies look fantastic. The gents, well they scrub up alright as well. And people that are there are there for one reason and that is to, to help celebrate Sandra's life and, and support breast cancer research. So that's fantastic. It's a great feeling. I'm President of the Ethnic Community Council. Uh, Newcastle and the Hunter. It's an organisation that uh, is an umbrella body for a number of ethnic community groups within the Newcastle area and we run programs funded by state government looking after aged care, looking after their social needs. Aged care is a growing concern amongst all the communities of Newcastle. Uh, one of the main areas of concern is, is dementia. And only recently at the Ethnic Community Council, we've run a few uh, workshops that talk about recognising the symptoms of dementia. Uh, and it's a growing concern, as I said, amongst not only our ethnic communities, but communities in general. Well, first value is that my family comes first. As we grew up, we never, for example, never paid a day's rent or board at home. Um, Dad didn't, didn't want that. Uh, he was the provider. But what he did want is for us to uh, make sure we were saving our funds for our future. So every, at the end of every week, when I got paid, um, all he would ask for, from me is for me to show him my, um, my account book uh, to see how much of my pay went into that account. And if there was $50 missing, he'd say, where'd that $50 go? So I'd have to fess up and say, well, I'll put it towards a new shirt, Dad. Why? I said, well, I've got a party to go to. Can't you wear the shirt you already had in your closet? I said, no, Dad, that's, that's falling apart. But it was fantastic because when I uh, got married, um, when we went to purchase our first home, the house cost us $90,000, and all we had to borrow at the time was forty dollars because we'd saved enough money for that deposit. I'd also like to endorse Clarice Hamlin. Clarice has worked very well, long and hard, in a number of the PNC associations in the schools in Ward 4. She's worked at a regional level on the regional PNC association and she understands family needs. She understands that families have particular issues trying to get kids to school, keep them at school, understanding what their needs are. So for the people of Walls End and Fletcher and Ellamore Vale, Minmai, those areas, Clarice will be a great attribute for them in council taking their issues to council. I started in my public school PNC a year before my eldest daughter actually started there. A friend of mine had started at this school, she said come along and I thought well, it'll 
It'll help me understand how the school system is and also how the PNC is run. I haven't looked back. I've been on PNCs for 18 years now. I've done president positions, treasurers, fundraisers. I've been a media person for the Newcastle Lake Macquarie District Council. I've been on the Regional Council of PNCs. I've done everything and everything um, on PNCs and I absolutely enjoy it. Different areas have got their different problems and issues and listening to people, is, is th that's what I do, I listen a lot to people. They have been saying that they would like to see better facilities out in Ward 4 rather than in Ward 1 all the time and I hope as a councillor that I can achieve that and I will certainly strive to do that. My father passed away while I was still in school. Uh, I'm actually a, one of five children. Um, my mother then was a single parent. It was a time that there was not enough money around for single parents. We banded together as a family. She has given me so many values, so many virtues. She's the most honest person um, alive. She has installed that on me as well. She is compassionate. She will do anything for anyone. With what she has given me over the years of growing up, I feel that that has only made me a better person and I hope to share that with other people as well. Councils need to resolve issues sooner than later. They need to stop the red tape and find solutions outside the square that they always seem to be looking in. Delays in approving the development applications, delays in approving community projects, especially the community projects, that will make or break a community spirit if it's not done sooner. We need to cut through the red tape and look outside the square so we can find solutions to all these problems. What we've got here is a group of people who've come together out of a sense of dismay at what's happening and they want to work with the spirit of community to start working with council administration to make sure that council start putting the community first. There are forms of research you can use to really understand the diverse opinions in the community, bring that out up front and then make decisions together about what your priorities are. And instead of that, we have a council who decides itself what should happen. We don't know why, we don't know who they're talking to. And then really it's imposed on people. We need leadership in council and ideas and support from councillors who are elected to turn that around and make it work for us and make it something that, like all these people down here early in the morning, is energetic and forward thinking and is looking forward to the day. Talking about the revolution. It's fine.